I got my first basketball goal when I was five years old. I never forget. I stay on that goal like day in and day out, every day, right down from my house. You know the kids in the neighborhood, they'll come play, and I probably had that goal till I was like 12 or 13. You know that goal meant a lot to me, and it kind of introduced me to the game of basketball. That's where it started. At. When he needs someone to go down inside and make the big, strong play, that is Sean Long, a double-double machine this year. Strong start for Sean Long. That's good news for Louisiana. Long for three. Things wasn't always easy for my kids. And having five kids, it was hard. <laughs> With my husband and myself working, we try our best to make things fit, but we was trying to pay for a home. It hurt to tell my kids no, if it was necessary, if they really needed this. We couldn't afford it. It was hard. When Sean was born, he was his daddy all in all. Oh, he was so proud of Sean. He was proud that he had another son. Well, I really wanted another daughter, but he was so proud that he had another son. At night, I would sleep. He would take care of Sean. All night and get up and go to work. But the first time Sean said, Daddy, he called to work, he can't work today. He couldn't work because his son called daddy. The thing about my father that I can remember was, you know, he didn't, I mean, he talked to me, but he, he was just more of a lead by example type of guy. Everything he did, you know, he worked hard at it. That's something I'll never forget. He told me one time, you know, no matter what you do, you put your all into it. Sean always had interest in nothing but basketball. Sean would go to bed, and in the bed was Sean basketball. Look like every coach that they had a little team in Morgan City would come here to tell me, ask me to tell Sean to play with them. You don't have to worry about paying us, because you know he had a little fee to the bitty basketball. But Sean always chose Mr. Jimmy Johnson. I can remember the first day he came to uh, practice. He was quiet. He wouldn't give me no trouble. Nothing, he just sat down and look. And I knew when I was first seeing him. He, he didn't know nothing, but he was automatically a basketball player. And no doubt when he came on the team, he was a leader. But he didn't know, he didn't know how to take a leader place at the time. Sean worked into it himself. After that, he was all right. Since like four years old, I've been playing basketball. This is just gonna be my first time playing organized basketball. So along the way, I picked up a lot of fundamental things from Coach Jimmy. And I just tried to uh, let it translate to the court. And so at an early age, I learned, you know, to try to have a killer instinct out there playing. You know, I was a lot shorter at the time, so I played point guard. So I was real, I was, I was real good at handling the ball. I had a little size on me too, so I was a strong driver. I started developing a shot. I just took it from there. He's, he's the toughest one I had on the court. Because if I, I had to stop him from driving through drive, I'd sit on the bench and he'd say, look at me, do like this. I said, but that means he's going away. But he could play. We couldn't have won a lot of games without it. Rebounds and, and making a shot, a lip or something on the basket. It couldn't stop him. It couldn't stop him at all. 
after my father passed away, basketball kind of went down for me, you know. I had uh, stopped playing. I was just playing pickup ball, but I still had the love for the game, you know. So once I got back into it and started playing organized ball more, I just got the passion back and just was pushing. When Sean quit playing basketball, I, I really, you know, believe that Sean was mad at his dad from leaving him. But my husband died 55, and he figured that it left him too soon. Like the kids would come by to go and play basketball, Sean wouldn't go. He would lock up in his room. And that was his time for the loss of his dad. I didn't bother him. He was right by my side the whole way, you know, up until, you know, he started getting sick and whatnot. But if I, if I was playing basketball, you know, he was at my practice, games and whatnot, you know, putting his all into that through me. So for that, I appreciate him and, you know, I miss that about him. When he was, uh, I guess his freshman year, you know, I just got really to meet him. Um, I, I noticed he was very quiet. He didn't say much when we first met. I, honestly, I don't know that he said a whole bunch until maybe his junior year, he more, more opened up. And you could tell there was a big difference in him on the floor maybe and, and off the floor. I think there was a period there where maybe a year or two where he was just lost. He needed people to trust and love him. It started out rough for my freshman year. I wasn't used to, you know, taking orders from a big old white man. It was something new to me. Uh, he yelling at me all the time. But as I grew, you know, and as I uh, progressed in high school, a lot of it came from Coach Witt and him staying on me. I realized, you know, he wasn't like, you know, everybody else. He was a cool guy and uh, he, he really genuinely loved the players and he loved the game. And that's one thing that we shared and that's one thing that I respected about him. You know, when he came in as a freshman, he showed some skill sets that, that, that were going to help him later on. I mean, I could tell he had some skill, very raw, but he, he came back that sophomore year with just a complete different mentality. He looked great in practice. I mean, his conditioning changed. The way he ran the floor, how hard he was working changed. When Sean was younger, we didn't think Sean was going to be tall. Sean was real short. And we really thought he was going to be the same size as the other boys. I'm 6'2", so I remember in junior high, I was taller than him. So when he got to like 10th grade, all of a sudden I'm looking up at him like, wow, he just grew out of nowhere. If I had to describe Sean in one word, it would be warrior. When we was on that sideline and we see him grab his jersey and pound his chest, we know whoever guarding him, you, you better bring your lunch bucket because uh, you about to go to work, son. When you're playing, you know, it's kind of like, a, I look at it kind of like war. You, mean, you don't want any nice guys out there playing. I mean, going to war with you, but, you know, it's definitely just all passion for the game and just, just wanting to win. There's many of Saturdays and Sundays, you know, just me and him are coming to this gym and get up and down the floor. You know, he get up 100, 200, 300 shots. That's not something that you coach. That's something you have right here. The game was the Ellender game at Ellender for first place in district on the line. We were down like 16, 17 points, you know, and everybody was, was dragging their head. And, you know, during the timeout, he told us, he said, look, get the ball to me, get the ball to me. And them guys knew when he turned it on like that, he means that get him the ball. Well, Ellender, well, they, they press all game. Sean would get the ball dribbled through the press and was pulling up, hitting three after three after three after three. Well, before you know it, it's a two-point game. And these kids looking at their coach like, you know, what you want us to do? On the court, he's very intimidating. You know, he's, I told you he played with that fire, you know, that determination. But off the court, I'd say, he, you know, he, he's not what people think he is. If you're down, he's going to pick you up. If you need a hand, he's there. If, if you struggling, he going to get on you because he, he, he wants to win and he wants his teammates to do everything that they can to win. His sophomore year, I was in working at Nichols State. Um, I was in town to watch a Morgan City High game. 
And I noticed the first thing I noticed was there was someone out there with size, which was not traditional for Morgan City High. But the one thing I did notice at that time, he had good ball skills for someone his size. When I came back to watch him as a junior, and he had grown a little bit more, he, he appeared to me to be about 6'8". And I noticed that the ball skills had improved. Um, he could shoot the basketball on the perimeter, he could score inside, and he could block shots, and he had a gift for rebounding the basketball. So there's no question at this point, he's a Division I player. When he first came in, he transferred from Mississippi State after a semester and set out that spring semester. Uh, and it was difficult for him because he had a lot of things going on uh, with, with his family situation and, and having the birth of a son. We, we had to sit him down and make sure he understood that school was the, the vehicle uh, so he could get exactly what he wanted at the end is, is playing basketball. When, when he first got here, my biggest concern was how would he handle the sit-out year. And we were able to write an appeal for Sean. He got a waiver. He, instead of sitting out an entire year, he only sat out a semester. I'm glad it worked out that way because it was really difficult for him to be here, have to practice, go to class, and not be able to play. He's improved by leaps and bounds. Each year, he's gotten better as a basketball player, but also better as a student and better as a person. And his maturity has been very impressive and also his work ethic. He's worked hard in the last couple of years. He's really tried to perfect his craft. Uh, he's amazing to me, honestly. Uh, uh, when I signed here and I saw him play, he had a skill set that I've never really seen before. Shoot the ball, dribble and everything. I mean, I just knew for a fact I could learn a lot from him. He has a good heart. Uh, I think a lot of times he gets a bad rap just because of his energy and the fire and the, the way he plays with the emotion, but if you know Sean, you know he's a good person at heart, and uh, I think sometimes people don't always see that, which is kind of disappointing. They all look up to him. You know, he's the biggest guy on the team, and uh, he's, he's the biggest personality on the team, and the guys know the success that he's had in the past, uh, whether it's with us, uh, AAU circuit, or even in Team USA. Uh, the, everything that he does has been a very positive thing for his team, and Sean likes to share with that. And he's all about winning, and that, that's one of the things that I enjoy most about coaching him. He, he's a very unselfish player. Sometimes I want him to be more selfish and shoot the basketball. Great players want to be coached. And that's one thing that, that our staff loves about Sean. He comes in and watches tape, he talks to coaches, and each year he's gotten, he comes by more often. And so he accepts criticism, he wants to get better. I'm hungry to learn, I'm hungry to get better. And you know, each and every day, you know, there's somebody out there, you know, looking to take my spot. And, you know, that's the way I live and that's the way I think.